So once we've placed it there, this one will be 4 newtons. So can you see, we have this and we have this force. We have this force and this force. And this is 90 degrees. So this is going to be what? Our resultant. So we apply our what? Pythagoras. So resultant squared is equal to 2 squared plus 4 squared. 2 squared which is 4, 4 squared. So this one is 20 because this is 16. Therefore our resultant force is root 20 newtons. This resultant force, this resultant force is, is the effect of all these forces. All these forces, whatever they are going to be, where, where, they, are, where, where they are facing, their effect, their result, their result of their action is just a resultant of 20 newtons. But what, we, what you would need also is, so where is this object going to move? I know now that it's being pulled by a resultant force of 20, root 20 newtons, but where is it moving? We need to calculate maybe this angle theta. If we can calculate this angle theta, we will be safe because we will now say, okay, this object is being pulled at 20, with a resultant force of 20 degrees of of, 20, of root 20 newtons at an angle of theta to the horizontally right direction because this angle theta is making is what is with respect to the horizontally right direction, horizontally right or, or, or horizontally right direction. So let's calculate that angle theta. We can use tan, sin cos tan, because we have 4 newtons and 2 newtons. So we can use tan. Tan theta is equal to opposite 4 over adjacent, which is 2. Then now you can do your, you can get your what? Your theta. So it will be arctan of 4 over 2. Unfortunately, in my three years of doing applied mathematics, uh, of doing applied applied mathematics i haven't bought a calculator i really do not i do not understand why i haven't bought a calculator so i cannot really calculate the angle here but the angle that you get here is the what is the angle where the what the object will move so here you'll be saying the resultant so your answer will be the resultant will be equal to 20 root 20 newtons at the angle that you're going to get here, the theta, to what? To the horizontally, horizontally right direction. So these were not unbalanced forces. This object was going to move. This object is moving at this angle, theta, to the what? horizontally direction. So this angle is going to move in this direction when these forces, when these forces act. It's going to move in that direction. So the other important part when I raised what? When I raised Newton's second law of motion at the top part of the day is this. Now you may be asked to find the acceleration. It's moving at what acceleration? All you have to do is say the resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration. Let's say we're given that our mass is 6 kgs. If our mass was equal to 6 kgs, after you do tug of 4, you do tug of 4 in your different directions like we did here, yeah? Like we did here, the tug of four vertical, the tug of four horizontal, we came up with two, two, four, two forces. Then we found the resultant of those two forces. We came up with the resultant of root 20 newtons. That resultant of root 20 newtons is what we are going to put into our formula. So we are going to say our resultant force of root 20, the resultant force of root 20 newtons, of root 20 newtons, this is, yeah, root 20 newtons will be equal to mass, which is 6 times acceleration. Here I'm not calculating acceleration. So this thing is going to move in that direction, that theta direction, at the acceleration that we're calculating now. The acceleration will be root 20 over 6 um, meters per second squared. So this is the acceleration that it will move at. When all those forces are put together, when they create that resultant force of root 20 newtons, the acceleration will be A equal to root 20 over 6, six, uh, six meters. This is in a case where there's no what, resultant force. When, 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 when there's no equilibrium, I mean, when the forces are not unbalanced. When the forces are balanced, there is no acceleration. When there's no acceleration, there is no change in the state of rest because the, our resultant force will be equal to zero because the forces are what are balanced 
the forces are balanced equilibrium when there's equilibrium the forces are balanced when the forces are balanced there's no resultant force so our result our f equal to m a will be zero is equal to m a so whatever mass is going to be my acceleration is going to be zero meters per second squared when there's no acceleration there is no what no change of state and that is in the what that is in the in the case of in the case of having what of having equilibrium but in the case of no equilibrium there's a resultant force where there's a resultant force there's going to be acceleration and therefore the state of motion or rest changes if it if it was resting it will start moving if it was moving it will either change direction because acceleration is a change of direction it will either change direction or it will either increase its speed or or whatever it, 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 or not like or whatever those two things will happen it's either this acceleration is going to cause a change in direction or an increase in velocity or speed it's going to be the increase in change of velocity or speed so that was very important and if you have any question I've opened a, a, a group on, on, on the website iqmates.com um, the group is uh, Astronomy and Mechanics by Houston Mzamindo that's the group you, where there you can ask me any question and I can try to explain some of the principles further and need, if need be I can record new videos to, to explain other concepts that you're not understanding so feel free to join that group and let's discuss and see where how best to help each other. All right. In the next video, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to tell you what we we, we would, right now we have, we, have, we have finished what the first the first topic. We have finished the first topic of astronomy. We have finished of mechanics. So in the next video, we are going to start our what our um, topic circular motion. And I hope you are ready for that because it's an interesting one when it comes to when it comes to gravitation and all of those. So um, see you in the next video.